Thank you and welcome. I'm calling to order this meeting of the Arlington Select Board on Monday, May 2nd, 2022. I am Select Board Chair Leonard Diggins and I will now confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please, excuse me, please respond in the affirmative. Mrs. Mahan? Yes, thank you. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Corsi? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Full house tonight. Staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Mr. Taptelane? Yes. Mr. Heim? Yes. And Board Administrator Ashley Meyer is participating, but not as a panelist. Tonight's meeting of the Arlington Select Board is being conducted remotely consistent with an act signed into law on February 15, 2022, and that extends certain COVID-19 measures. The act includes an extension until July 15, 2022 of the remote meeting provisions of Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. The governor's order, which is on the town's website and referenced with, with, reference with the agenda materials for this meeting, allow public bodies to meet entirely remotely as long as reasonable public access that allows the public to follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Before we begin, please note the following. First, this meeting is being conducted via Zoom. It is being recorded and is also being simultaneously broadcast on ACMI. Second, persons wishing to join the meeting by Zoom may find information on how to do so on the town's website. Persons participating by Zoom are reminded that they may be visible to others and that if you wish to participate, you are asked to provide your full name in the interest of developing a record of the meeting. Third, all participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comment and those persons are not required to identify themselves. Both Zoom participants and persons watching at ACMI can follow the posted agenda materials also found on the web, town's website using, using the Novus agenda platform. And finally, each vote tonight will be taken by roll call. This evening's agenda is potentially longer than it looks, and I hope that we'll be able to get all the town's business done tonight before the third session of town meeting begins. I now turn to the second item on the agenda which is a discussion and vote on article 24, home rule petition, I'm sorry, home rule legislation slash financial estimates and budget documents. And we're gonna ask Mr. Corsi to lead us in this discussion. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, so article 24, we talked about this early this year. This, this was put in at the request of the town manager and as a result of, quest, of conversations I had with the town manager this year and a few years ago, and it concerned the timing of the submission of the budget book that the manager prepares every year. Um, presently, Section 31 of the Town Manager Act calls for the submission of the budget no later than January 15th, and that's to the select board and with copies um, to each member of the Finance Committee. And in discussions with the town manager, three out of four years, the governor's budget with the local aid figures comes out after January 15th, but before January 31st. And so in our discussions, um, I'd ask the manager if, if he thought it would be helpful if that date were extended. And for that reason and various other reasons, he thought it, he thought it would be. And so I had asked that this be put on. Um, we've had some resistance from the finance committee or to some questions from the finance committee on the timing uh, of the submission of the budget. And uh, Mr. Chapdelaine, uh, the chair and I actually attended the finance committee meeting last week. And uh, what we had originally wanted to hear back from them on was how they felt about moving that date from January 15th through the 31st. And after um, a somewhat short discussion because it was before town meeting, FinCom voted seven to five against this, um, moving the date. And, and again, it's our recommendation to town meeting, but we respect um, what, what FinCom uh, has to say. So um, following that meeting, I had some discussions with the chair of the finance committee and suggested a potential compromise that uh, might be acceptable to the board at, at voting for town meeting, but also possibly could be acceptable to finance committee and what that would call for. And, and I may ask Mr. Chair and might turn it over to Attorney Heim to, to walk through the changes because he, he has come up with uh, to present to us. But uh, in a nutshell, what it calls for is the submission of a draft budget by the town manager on January 15th. 
and then a final budget on January 31st, um, that would be the change to section 31 of the Town Manager Act. Section 32 of the Town Manager Act presently calls for the select board to submit its budget recommendations, which is basically submitting the manager's budget to FinCom on or, on or before the first day of February. What the language that we're gonna hear from Attorney Heim is actually calls for it to be submitted by the first Tuesday in February. So actually sets a new date for the town manager to present the budget to select board for us to receive it and for us to pass it along. Um, so that that's the background of it. Um, I, I felt that this is something that would be um, helpful to the town manager would still allow finance committee to do their work. And um, hopefully through this compromise, if it's acceptable to board members, it's something we can present to town meeting. There was a separate issue on the warrant that maybe after this discussion, I could talk about briefly if we have time, Mr. Chair, but uh, I don't know if Mr. Chapdelin or Attorney Heim would like to, to add to, to what I just uh, summarized. Um, uh, Mr. Heim, you just shared your screen. By all means, feel free to go ahead and talk unless you'd like uh, Mr. Chapdelin to start. If I may, I'll, I'll, I'll walk through this very quickly. So yeah. we'll be submitting home rule legislation. Uh, the recommended vote would be authorized like board to submit home rule legislation substantially along the following lines. And I'll just slowly sort of scroll through this because it's really not a, a huge textual change for to achieve the purpose of what we're talking about. So essentially in section 31 uh, of the town manager act, we would be adding language that essentially highlights um, a draft uh, estimate, which is what we usually call the town manager's budget, but a draft estimate in writing um, that would be on the same timeline that it is right now, 15th day of January. Um, and we'd highlight the fact that this is prior to the receipt of the governor's budget outlining projected state aid, uh, aid sources of revenue for the town for the ensuing fiscal year. We'd add a paragraph, basically establishing a January 31st timeline for the manager to essentially submit a revised uh, uh, financial estimate, a revised budget that's informed by the state aid numbers. And that would be transmitted to you just like uh, the draft, uh, the draft budget would be. And uh, finance committee members would also be CC'd on that as well. In addition, as Mr. DeCourcy referenced, we'd also be making a very minor change to section 32 that essentially uh, codifies the select board's obligation, although the finance committee members will likely already have a copy of it, to forward uh, the budget with any comments on or before the first Tuesday of February, which um, you know could be anywhere from a couple of days to a week after the current deadline, which is February 1st. And that's it. So I, I think the actual textual change is necessary to the Town Manager Act to achieve this um, uh, are, are pretty simple. As a comment, um, the comment is essentially a summary of what you know, Mr. DeCourcy said and, and what you folks all know from your practical experience, which is that the manager oftentimes submits a draft finance, uh, a financial estimate uh, to the select board and uh, that gets forwarded to the finance committee. And then that immediately has to be amended uh, positively or negatively, depending on whether or not um, what the profession state aid numbers look like. And, and the manager uh, highlighted for me that we don't necessarily have final state aid numbers, but we do have usually have the benefit of the governor's budget, which gives us a, a much more accurate picture of what we should be expecting. So um, this comment also recognizes that the finance committee needs to get working right away. And so it's uh, imperative for them to continue to receive that draft financial estimate that they're sort of CC'd on uh, by January 15th. So it gives them a head start on the process that they need to be engaged in. Um, but it, it also uh, builds in a timeline for this revised financial estimate um, informed by this critical data that otherwise we wouldn't have. So with that, I'll stop sharing my screen, but I can obviously uh, bring it back up if folks have uh, questions about the textual changes or um, the sort of general nature of the comment. And I, I can tweak anything very, very easily with respect to this, um, this idea. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Heim. May Ms. Chaplain? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, really, there is not much more to say than what Mr. DeCourcy and Attorney Heim just described, but 
I would just restate uh, what Mr. DeCourcy said that I think this is a compromise that both allows the finance committee the time they need to do their work, but also allows the manager, the board, and the board to issue a public document that can be tied directly to the governor's budget estimates so that there isn't a change in what's even presented publicly to this board after the governor's budget is issued. So I think there's a good government transparency, financial accessibility argument to be made as a backing for making this change. And uh, I would say I would give Mr. DeCourcy great credit for uh, taking what was disagreement last Wednesday and bringing it towards what uh, may very well be compromised today if the board votes favorably on it. Thank you, Mr. Chaplain. And um, so I'll now turn to my colleagues for questions, comments. Um, I guess since we're in re full remote format, I'll just go down the line. So um, I'll start with Mr. Hurd. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and I would just like to thank Mr. DeCourcy, Attorney Hyman, the town manager, for, and Mr. Diggins for all the work on putting this together. I think the town man, I mean, this discussion is giving me memories of being back into the chamber way back when. I think that's when how long we've been talking about this. And you made a good argument for why this would be beneficial back then. And I know there was some pushback right away from this finance committee with good reason. And I certainly have respect for the view of our colleagues on the finance committee, but I think through discussions and con compromise, we've come up with a good plan here that really serves everyone's goals. So I'll move positive action on Article 24 as described by Attorney Heim and Mr. Corsi. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Mr. Helmuth? Thank you. I happily second that and also second the sentiments of uh, gratefulness to Mr. DeCourcy, particularly for hammering out, I think, was a reasonable compromise. Um, it, it strikes me, I completely understand and respect the Finance Committee and appreciate Finance Committee's uh, eagerness and diligence at starting early. But you know, it seems to me that it's in everyone's interest, including FinCom, that we that we are realistic and honest about the numbers we have. And if we're, you know, kind of perpetually, we're starting from an uh, a number that we everybody knows is going to change that we're much better off everyone's i think would be better off with this with this so um you know i hope that uh, it does prove to be a reasonable compromise that meets all the needs thank you mr chair thank you mr helmuth Ms. Ms. mahan um uh thank you mr chair and um having never served on finance committee fincom i can't speak from any institutional knowledge or anything like that um and i'm pleased there was a compromise um, having appeared before FinCom myself in the past, um, I know uh, a lot of work and homework behind that. And I don't know if, if FinCom members or whoever sets the schedule, maybe regardless of what the date is on, on the budgets that are pretty much the same year after year. Um, I don't know if they sat those on the front end and, you know, to alleviate that problem, but that's not something I have to I don't know, Mr. DeCourt, if you can give me a quick answer on that or not. Are, 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 are there truly no budgets that are like that? But it seems like certain budgets are probably pretty much pro forma year after year. Mr. Corsi? Yeah, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, Ms. Mahan, that, that, that's right. Typically, if you look at the history of the Finance Committee, the, the so-called general government budgets, which would be town clerk, select, select board office, town manager, those are usually done first. They don't really change that much from year to year. And that, and that Sometimes it's a function of the subcommittee members too. Those subcommittee members were ready uh, earlier, but those are the ones you typically see early on. You see schools later, you see the, it, the, the last thing you usually see are the enterprise funds uh, with water and sewer being at the very end of the um, process. But you're right, there are some budgets that, that are typically done very early in the process. Okay, thank you. And thank you, Mr. Chair. Welcome. And so, yes, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm totally fine with this. I mean, and I appreciate what Mr. Corsi did. I mean, it was very, it was a very interesting um, FinCom meeting. It was my first one I've attended long range planning uh, committees, but never actually I had attended one FinCom meeting when I was, um, when I was campaigning. I mean, this one was different from that one. Uh, but um, uh, yes, very much appreciated. And what's also very clear is that the FinCom can get the numbers that they need for any budget. Um, any part department um, when they want it. I mean, the the town managers made that very clear. I mean, and so so uh, this is just going to um, uh, give us the flexibility I mean, that 
uh, we need in order to provide, as the town manager said, better data to the public when we release the, um, the, the, the draft. Uh, so so um, with a motion from Mr. Hurd for favorable action and a second from Mr. Helmuth, Mr. Heim. Uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah, sorry. I could just add something before the sure. vote. Sure. Okay. Yeah. I, and, and, and again, just in terms of the compromise, as I mentioned, this has not been voted on by finance committee and, and you know, we're not sure where they're going to come out. I was comfortable for the reasons I stated and for the reasons Mr. Chapterlin and attorney Heim stated that, that this, this was a reasonable compromise. They had good discussions with chair Foskett, but I just want to, you know, we don't know what the finance committee will do with or with uh, this evening, but I, I certainly wanted to let the board know I'm comfortable with the change here. I thought it was a good compromise. Um, and I, I don't know if I mentioned the vote that they had last week was seven to five before this compromise. So it was a close vote to begin with. And if I could just for another uh, minute or two, there was also discussion at the meeting last week about the timing of the warrant and when it's published by the select board office and the numbering of the warrant. And there was concern that this year that they'd come out later than um, prior years and, and um, that they, they were looking for some sort of agreement with us as to timing on that. And uh, my feeling on that is, and in, in I feel in, the timing was perhaps two weeks after the warrant closes. And I think that's appropriate for a policy of the select board um, and a goal for us to have. I don't think it's something that we need to enter into a memorandum of understanding with the finance committee, but I wanted to give you full disclosure in terms of what else was was discussed there. And, and so I think what I would propose doing is when we set our goals and we update policies, we perhaps set that as a policy for publishing the warrant um, with, with the numbers. And to the extent things were late and, and I had a role in that this year as chairman, I, I, you know, I, I, I'm sorry for that, but it's, it's uh, you know, the way things happen, but I certainly will be more involved in it. I encouraged um, members of the finance committee to involve the chair in any concerns that they have um, this year, but I did, it just didn't feel like something that rose to the level of requiring an agreement. So uh, I wanted to point that out to the board in terms of additional discussion and um, originally what was a desire of the FinCom to tie that in with this, I view them as two separate issues. Mr. Thank Chair? you, Ms. Yeah, uh, yes, Ms. Mahan. Uh, just very briefly, definitely want to discuss that. Um, I will say from previous years, because the warrant um, is the select board's office, as well as the town moderator and chair of finance committee, um, I can speak from personal knowledge that we're always ready to go. It's, it's getting the other two pieces of the pie to uh, allow us to do that final checkoff. So, um, I just wanted to, um, I know Mr. DeCourcy is willing to put himself under the bus um, and, and, and that's okay. But I can tell you that um, just about every year we're waiting to hear back from piece two and piece three of the pie. We're all set to go. So um, when we have those discussions, uh, we, um, just if my colleagues could be aware of that knowledge and you know, maybe we need to, um, as a policy discussion, discuss how we encourage, we can't require, but the uh, moderator who's new now, we have a new, as we all know, as well as um, chair of finance committee, who's pretty relatively new to that position. So I just wanted to add that. Thank you. Yes, well, well thank you, um, Mr. Mahad. I mean, and I guess I'll just add to what Mr. McCorsey added, added uh, was there was, there was also a suggestion that, that um, if we had stuck with the, the original plan, I mean, before the compromise that we pushed back the start of town meeting uh, by by two weeks, you know, so so that's out there, you know, uh, and and that could that could have other ramifications, but but we'll save that for our discussion later on. So so um so with that, I'll go back to Mr. Heim and to take the vote, Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Corsi. Yes. Mr. Helmet. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes, thank you. Yes, it came through a little strung out, but I think you said my name, Mr. Hyman. I said yes. I did. It's unanimous. Okay. Great. It may be me. I mean, I may be seeing an unstable internet connection soon, but um, 
usually it's pretty good here, you know. So um, we're gonna move to um, item three now and it's a discussion of select board meetings. I mean, and I have this on the agenda because I mean, as all of you have been chair, you know sometimes you see things coming, you know, and it becomes apparent that you're gonna need more meetings than you have um, planned. I mean, and so in our agenda, for the 16th is getting kind of stacked and there's some things that are coming after that that I know are going to require that we have a meeting on the 23rd and so I want to see if members if we can get a quorum um, for that meeting and um, so can members make that you know, of course so town meeting will still be going on that's a 100 percent you can bet everything on that you know uh, and so it'll be an hour-long meeting so I guess I'm seeing nodding heads. I'm not seeing any. Okay, so so then we'll have one on the 23rd. Great, thank you. And uh, um, from, I guess I'm getting a little paranoid. You know, uh, about even with the 23rd, I'm a little concerned about waiting until the six the the 16th of June for a next meeting. You know, uh, the, once again, I don't know. I mean, I think one of the reasons we pushed back a little bit. Further, I mean, further ahead in time in this because well chances are we'd be all done by town meeting by the 16th it you know, uh he i don't know about the sixth you know but it i guess i would feel a little better I mean, about having the sixth and the 20th I mean then waiting until the 13th even if we just had an hour-long meeting on the sixth it it i mean how are people feeling about that and we just as a suggestion yes what if we were to do like a tuesday meeting where we could be in person and we could have a longer meeting so you want a longer meeting on the 23rd on, on the i mean 23rd? if we're worried about instead of i mean we'll see what happens what works better for other board members but i mean for me for my personal schedule to just kind of pump keep pumping them week after week is difficult. Um, yeah. I'm just saying, if, if it's a time crunch, then do it on a day that we don't have town meeting, and we can go as long as the business suggests. But what's well, an idea? I mean, I, I do have conflicts on Tuesdays in general. I mean, MBTA conflicts. You know, um, so so I mean, I mean, this would take priority. But if we could avoid Tuesdays, I mean, that would be good. So that opens up Thursdays, and um, so. So, but you're saying that the, the 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 constant pump on Mondays aren't working for you, Mr. Hurd? I mean, I'm just saying having a lot of shorter meetings yeah. is more difficult for me than per, just personally than yeah. having fewer longer meetings. I mean, after eight or nine o'clock, I can stay till one in the morning, but I mean, just with my family situation, Gotcha. Having a lot of meetings where I'm tied up between from seven to to nine o'clock is difficult. But I mean, again, just go up. Uh, it's a board consensus, so I, I don't want the whole board to you know be put out because of my schedule. But for me, if we had if it was a concern about getting business done, and we're able to find nights where we could spend more time on select board business. And fewer meetings that works better for me i hear you i hear you you know uh, although we'll have a general discussion about about that i mean at another time just really trying to work out you know um, in the near term you know um, at least getting us through through june because we, we we clearly can't make it from the the 16th of may to the 13th of june without a meeting so we gotta have we gotta have one you know um, between between the 16th and the 30th, you know, and, and preferably you know, about five days or so before the 30th for uh, something that's coming up. I mean, and so whether that is on the 23rd, and the 24th really is rough for me. I mean, it's just a long running MBTA commitment. Actually, that kind of got shifted I me mean, to Tuesdays in order to allow me to um, make the Monday meetings. I mean, so I guess I could open up the 20th, the 26th. So 26th. 26th is better for me. It's better for you? 
Yeah, if we're gonna do a full night meeting. All right. And um, how's twenty six for other folks? It's fine with me. Okay. All right. You know, so through twenty six, um, seven fifteen, it'll just be a full night meeting, and, and um, we can put discussion of future meetings meeting on that agenda too, just in case we do need something before the um, the thirteenth. Okay. Great. And so, so at so right now at this point, we have a the sixteenth. 26, the 16th at 7, uh, the 26th at 7.15, me and the 13th being at 7.15. All righty. And uh, so next on the agenda is for approval, um, the Arlington Heights Spring Fling Festival on Saturday, May 21st. And so do we have Ms. Um, Janet O'Riordan here? Great. She should be joining the meeting right yep. now, Mr. Chairman. Sure, thank you. Hello, Ms. Hello, Ms. O'Riordan. How are you doing? Not hearing you. I think you're muted. Oops. Yeah, there you go. Yes. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. So Good evening. thank me. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. So you want to tell us a bit about the spring fling? That's quite the tongue twister. I know, spring yeah. fling festival. Um, okay, it, well, it's a follow-up role. This Saturday, we're having the spring window painting. Um, there'll be 54 windows painted and 23 businesses in the Heights. Um, so, and then two weeks later, we thought we would have a spring festival sort of to bring people into the Heights, see the windows, and then, um, uh, have some all sorts of fun activities for people to do. And there's a major uh, environmental theme to this themes um, uh, festival as well. So I, I did send a, a proposal and an attachment. Has everybody seen that? Like what I'm asking for? Okay, so um, yeah, so, so this is the first of its kind. I mean, I, as well, as far as I remember, I don't know if they've ever had a spring festival up in the Heights, but, um, you know, I've been working very closely with Cecily Miller from the commission and Beth Locke from the chamber and we've got some other volunteers. And so, um, um, so far it's, it's turning out, I think that we've got a, quite a program, actually a pretty full program for, for everybody, I think that afternoon. And so, um, so I guess, um, um, we can go over the the things that I'm asking for. Is that what I should do? Because I don't want to take too much of your time, I guess. Um, I would say if everyone's read it, you know, we can probably not go through everything. I'll just turn it over to my colleagues and ask if they um, have questions or concerns. I mean, and and um, see if we can get a motion. You know? Okay. Sure. So um, going down the line, but alternating alternating the starting point. We'll start with um, Mr. Helmuth this time. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd happily move approval. Uh, I appreciate that you took the time to meet with Officer Roto and the others to work out the logistics ahead of time. That's always a great way to do it. Um, I'm very excited to see what you do. I think that there's been some wonderful collaborations with the uh, Commission for the Arts in the Heights um, in the last couple of years. So I'm really excited to see this idea and I look forward to attending. Okay. Sure. Uh um, one thing I might want to ask, because there is, a, I did ask for the parking spaces, but now what about the bike lane? I think that's maybe going to be the issue tonight, whether, um, so we want, we want to have the, the spaces on the two ends of Mass Ave, just to sort of spread out the whole um, event, um, half the tables in, near the Heights Pub and half the table near the bus depot. Um, so originally, we just thought we would have the bike lane, I mean, excuse me, the, the parking um, spaces are they're only eight feet wide and so um if we have a tent or something it might be better to have the lane as well so uh, i guess that i i guess i would like to know whether you think it's okay to have both the lane and the and the parking space um so that we can um people can put up a tent if they want i don't know if yeah, everyone, yeah. so I thank, guess you. That thank you so so my question is did you discuss that with officer roto or other town officials i did well he said that i would have to 
he said in the past, you know, like, uh, again, I, I think like an East Feast of the East, they did have tents up on, on Mass Avenue, of course, and that would go into the bike lane. And he said, well, you know, I think the bicyclists, you know, probably not too happy, but you know, that's something that you should just ask the select board about. But it, he didn't think that it was something that couldn't be done. But he just said, well, I think you should ask them what they think. Um, and he knew that Len, Mr. Diggins is also, you know, a, an avid bicyclist and maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. okay yeah bike. thank you yeah yeah that, okay. that, that, that's fine i appreciate that um so i will move approval and i will be uh, attentive to my colleagues thoughts particularly in the bike lane issue so uh if you want to further refine my motion uh, with regard to that or not i will leave that in your capable hands thank you mr chair thank you mr Hellman. Ms. mahan um i'm be happy to second that and um Along with Mr. Helmets, I, I I'm okay with giving approval for the I think it's four and a half hours for the uh, side, sidewalk space and bike lane. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Corsi. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I'll also support uh, approval on this as well. And um, I defer to you, Mr. Diggins, if there's any particular concerns on the on the bike lane issue. But but given the length of time, um, I, I'd be willing to support this as well. Thank you, Mr. DeCourcy. Mr. Hurd. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so I guess uh, so I'll talk about the event first before I talk about the bike lane. Um, I'm very excited about this. I live up in the Heights. I actually have been talking to town manager for a couple of years about having some sort of a, a festival up in the Heights that we had thought we were going to do in conjunction with Oktoberfest. But I think I was going to call it Heights Fest. So spring fling sounds much better. And I think it draws much more positive attention. Um, and to anyone that thinks that the requests are overly onerous, I actually was going to was going to suggest making Mass Ave one way for the period of the of the uh, festival. So I think what you're asking for is much more reasonable and measured. Um, so I, I do look forward to it, and I, and I will be happy to attend this. Um, I guess my concern with bike lane is it's not just for bicyclists, but it's also good to have a buffer between the event and the cars that are going by. And is it, if, if we come back and say that you just have the parking spaces, does it dramatically reduce the business's ability to do what they're planning on doing? Um, you mean as far as like the tables, the organizations or anything? Or no. just what their plans are. Yeah, the, the plans are, I mean, originally we were just going to have people, we're providing tables and chairs for these organizations. And yep. so, um, you know, so certainly eight feet is enough to have a table and a couple of chairs and for people to come up, you know, we can do without the bike lane, but yeah. the bike lane would just give them more space if they did want to put a canopy or a tent, you know, that would be like 10 feet, at least 12 feet, you know, but. So um, my, sorry, so my preference is to not go into the bike lanes in as long as you they can do what they need to what, what the business want to do and it doesn't hamper kind of the purpose of the event i personally would prefer to leave the bike lanes in place both for the cyclists and again you know i have a couple of crazy kids that and you think of the kids sitting there and kind of shoot out into the street past whatever event is is happening in the parking spaces it's good to at least have a little bit of space between where the cars are passing by so my my preference is to leave the bike lanes intact but again i mean it's a board decision so i mean that i'm happy to move approval in but as, as long as they can the event can function as, as it is intended with the bike lanes intact, that would be my preference. Right. Um, could I just mention, we were yes. also thinking that, you know, that sometimes, if, and again, I don't even know if the organizations will all want to put up a tent, maybe just a few, but we also thought if there were a couple of tents, you know, that would sort of alert people, hey, something's going on here, be careful, ride slowly. And by the way, we have uh, been, uh, been in touch with um, Officer Flaherty and we're going to um, take over like, well, that, that busy board up in the Heights, we're going to perhaps something put saying, you know, reduce speed of festivals going on, whatever for that day as well, coming from Lexington area. So they'll see that 
that will alert people driving. I know we are concerned about people driving and we want them to go slowly down Mass Ave, but um, we thought that again, maybe a tent would sort of alert people, hey, something's going on, why don't you go slowly, you know? So just another perspective, but. Um, okay. Okay, yeah, but sure. Me, Mr. Chair. Yeah. yeah. I appreciate that, you know. So, and, and just for the record, I, I do not ride a bike at all you know oh. uh, me, but i do i do care about cyclists me a lot you know and i think it's because i don't ride a bike at all that i feel as if i can advocate for them a little more strongly i mean i know in a certain sense that's counterintuitive me but it doesn't seem like i'm just kind of me um as the traders would say selling my own book you know but um uh but yeah it, it it's, it's just I, if when we had a conversation you know and I really appreciate the conversation. He, he, uh, first, I thought it was just going to be one spot. Um, and I was even hesitant with one spot. And then I kind of wanted to have this presentation from you to get a really better sense of what the whole thing was going to look like. Because if if essentially we had I mean, people kind of milling in the street I mean, and and traffic was going really slowly I mean, uh, down Mass Ave and we had I mean, police officers just really kind of watching traffic and guiding it through slowly, then I'd be okay with um, taking the bike lane because like everyone is going to be going slowly, but that's not what's happening. And I really don't like the sense of uh, cyclists having to jut out into the street I mean, you know, and, and then you, you, you like to think people are paying attention, but I mean, drivers are doing just, doing just about anything but paying attention to, to the road, some of them. Mm -hmm. Most of them are really good, but it only takes me one to hit a cyclist and we have a bad scene. You know, and I just want to do all I can you know, to minimize that I mean, and, 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 um, and I, I mean, it would be setting, a precedent and yeah we could pull back from it if we wanted to but but um i just prefer not to and, and also i saw some other comments that if this goes well we want to do more of them and yes we do want to do more of them but but let's try to do more of them you know um, without you know, taking bike lanes in out you know and so uh, I know it's just a part of a bike lane, but it does force the cyclists to to jut out into the road. I mean, and so I really would like to avoid that. And so uh, I was happy when you explained to Mr. Hurd that it's not going to inhibit uh, the mm -hmm. businesses from achieving what they want. It's just going beyond me, beyond that. And so so um, let's let's um let's try about taking a bike lane, and there might be some other creative solutions we can come up with that gets that tent um, for the. Um, the businesses. So I'm going to stop talking because I see Mr. Helmut's hand up. Okay. okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just because I was the, the, the author of the, of the motion, I'd like to amend my motion to uh, to move approval, uh, but without the bike lane uh, provision. Okay. okay. Thank you, Mr. Helmut. That's all I got. Thank you. Yeah. So um, do we have a second on that amended motion? Second. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. And um, so any further comments, questions, concerns? No? All right. So uh, motion from Mr. Helmuth and a second from Ms. Mahan. Uh, Mr. Heim? Uh, Mr. Chair, am I yes. correct in interpreting this as we're voting on the proposal as amended by the board, or are we voting on the amendment separately first? Oh, well, thank you for pointing that out, Mr. Um, Mr. Mr. Heim. I mean, we are voting on the proposal as amended. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Corsi. Yes. Mr. Helmet. Yes. Mohan. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. The unanimous vote. Great. Okay. Thank okay. you, Mr. Ridden. Okay. So thank you. So all set except so we can do everything except not take the bike lane. Yes. Okay, and let's hope we can move, full, you know, in the future, this is sort of, we'll set this precedent and maybe more will come in the future as far as more events. And, um, you know, this is a trial for the Heights. I think this is, I'm looking forward to this and, and, and thank you for your support. Okay. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you. Take thank care. You. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. So let me pull up the agenda here. We're on to um, consent agenda. And uh, so, on that, we have the minutes of uh, the meetings from April 11th and April 25th, uh, number five. Number six is request contractor drain layer license with Eduardo Pinheiro. Uh, number seven for approval Memorial Day ceremony, May 30th, 2022. Number eight, 
Charlie Proctor Memorial Ride. Number nine, Porch Fest at Whitmore Park on June 18th from noon to 6 p.m. And number 10, Summer Concert Series at Whitmore Park on, on July 13th, 20th, 27th, and August 3rd. And so I turn to my colleagues, unless you know, the town manager sees someone being in the participants that he thinks wants to speak to one of these issues. Sir, sir. Definitely. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I think I would only note that Galen Mook from Mass Bike is zoomed in right now. Um, would you like me to see if he wants to say a few brief words about the Proctor Memorial Ride? Sure. Okay. While, while he's joining the meeting, I'll share with you that I met with uh, Mr. Mook and Officer Rateau um, in lead up to putting this on the agenda and Officer Rateau gave the most um, warm uh, thanks to Mr. Mook for his preparation and very, very detailed plans for this event. So I think that was worth, worth sharing how highly Corey thought of the work put forth on this application. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mook. Um, thank you, Len, um, and everyone on the select board and, and Mr. Town Manager. That was a very um, lovely introduction. I appreciate that. Um, so the, the story is we're looking to do an event on the Minuteman Bikeway, which is a memorial ride for Charlie Proctor, who obviously we've been dealing with the aftermath of that crash for the past couple of years. And I'm appreciative of all the work that the select board in the town and the DPW and the police and all of have done to, to work on, on safety. Um, this is an event to um, memorialize Charlie as a person. So uh, it's actually following a day after his formal memorial service. Um, the family and friends will be in town. We're leading a ride that's going to start at the Bacow Sailing Pavilion at the Mystic Lakes. Um, with the state police, DCR, we're going to be traveling down Mystic Valley Parkway, come up through um, where we meet the town at Summer Street, and then we're going to hop onto the Minuteman and the ride goes out to the end of Bedford, turns around and comes back. Um, we realize that at Mass Bike, um, we understand the concerns around having large events on the Minuteman pathway. So we were very cognizant and wary about how to approach the municipalities. We went to um, Lexington and Bedford as well to um, kind of discuss with their bikeways committees. Also learned that there's no formal process to actually ask for a collective event throughout all municipalities. So this is also a little bit piecemeal, um, which is fine. And um, you know, if there's any concerns around it, we aren't actually expecting that many riders. Um, we're gonna cap it at 100 RSVPs. We're thinking that it's actually only gonna be close to 80 riders tops. Right now we're only at about 30 um, and the ride is gonna take place on Memorial Day weekend. So it's on May 29th. Um, but we're hoping that this is a, uh, an event that is fully in support with um, kind of the safety and recognizing that this is not just, you know, Arlington's concern, this is also state police concern, this is DCR concern, Lexington and Bedford. We're also hoping this can be an annual event. So um, we're working out some of the, the processes on year one to make sure this can be a success for year two, three and going forward. Um, we did get a traffic management plan per request by state police. Um, the stadies will be out on Mystic Valley Parkway. We're gonna have detail out. We're gonna have a cone situation set up. So Mass Bike is um, fronting the the work that's going into actually doing the, the management plan around it. So happy to share that with the select board if there's any concerns around some of the, the background details. Um, but I will say this is a first for us. So in terms of running this ride on this date and um, you know, happy to address any concerns as they pop up. Some of the ones that we've heard is how are we gonna message to our riders that the bikeway will be open for all users. So we're gonna be messaging very strongly that we're gonna be having riders ideally um, keep the pace at around average 10 miles an hour this is, you know, the priorities of users on the pathway are going to be honestly the littlest ones um, and people who are walking. Um, and to we're gonna have bells for everybody. Everybody's gonna have a little flag on or a little um, race bib so that they'll identify themselves. And we're gonna work on signage, um, which also may may or may not happen because I know I have to get requests for signage. But along the bikeway in Lexington and in Bedford too about you know, memorial ride this date, um, just, you know, reminding folks to stay to the right, alert when passing, um, dismount when crossing, and follow all applicable laws as well. So hopefully 
this is a, a great success um, and I fully am wary of adding more capacity with events or, or more demand on the bikeway at an already kind of overstretched um, end capacity on a busy weekend. So we are, we're wary of this and hopefully gonna mitigate any of those concerns. So with that, um, I don't know if that was anybody's concern, but I feel like I had to address it. So um, I'm here to, to answer questions and if there's any interest in participating, I can also follow up by sending a, a note of the uh, RSVP link. And I know Len's already chimed in to volunteer for it. So um, yeah, no, no, not yet. Okay, well, we'll make sure that, that the invite goes to you. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I haven't gotten an invite. You know, okay. don't know if I'm going to be available that weekend, you know, but we'll see. Okay. You know, I tried so, to throw it out there, but yeah. Okay. Good, good try. You know, so, uh, so with that, um, any um, questions, um, comments, motions? We're very happy to move approval, Mr. Chair. And this is on the consent agenda. All, all of it. All of it. Thank you. <laughs> but especially this one. Thank you for the time, guys. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Sorry, I jumped the gun, but I feel positively about this and everything else in this kind of okay. Great. Not to cut off the conversation, please. Oh, no problem. It's just that, you know, we got 14 minutes. That's why I'm kind of, you know, so yeah. So, I'm there with you. Yeah, you know, so okay. um, thank you, Mr. Hurd. Any um, questions, comments? All right, with a, a motion for Mr. Hurd to approve the consent agenda, a second from, I'm sorry, Mr. Helmuth to approve the consent agenda and a second for Mr. Hurd, Mr. Heim? Mr. Hurd. Yes. Of course he. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mr. Mahan. Yes. Mr. De uh, Mr. Diggins. Yes, thank you. So we're now on to um, traffic rules and orders. Um, uh, item number 11 is the town manager search. Uh, consulting service and interim internal candidate solicitation. So that it's me, and, and we have um, Mrs. Um, Mrs. Malloy um, has has posted a to internal candidates. I mean, department has me uh, to see what interest there is in, in uh, for for someone to serve as interim town manager. And, and she and I will be talking next Tuesday to follow up on that, and also. Uh, the other thing I want to accomplish on this item is to get my colleagues' approval for the selection of, let me pull it back up again, you know, Paradigm, you know. Um, community Paradigm Associates mean as the search form, you know. So um, as you know, we have to take the lowest bids. I mean, we had three bidders. I mean, two were were um, close to each other, and and um for Ms. Malloy and I, it was a pretty easy call uh, to go with Community Paradigm. And, and so, um, if you have any questions or concerns, I mean, um, I'm happy to entertain them. You know, uh, I um I'll see what I can do in terms of answering them. You know. So, uh, Mr. Chair. Yes. Um, I guess I would ask to you through you. Um, I'm not sure if it's a town manager or town council. Uh, having done, I think this will be the fourth or fifth now. Fourth. Um, are we bound to take the lowest bid? Because I don't recall that. I, I I don't know that we have any written policy on that. And and my other question is, I I just have concern where. Um, one of the principals is a current town town of Arlington employee. Um, so that's why I, I have had discussions with members of the subcommittee, not with Ms. Malloy. Um, not on that particular point, but on a different point. So, um, so two questions. One, are we bound <clears throat> to take the lowest bid? And two, just in the, you know, spirit of complete transparency where one of the six principals is one of our, and it's not the town manager, Mr. Chapdelaine, um, is, is a current uh, town employee. Um, I'd really like to, um, and if we end up going with what's before us, that's fine, but I'd like to have as clean of his hands as, as possible. I appreciate that. So, uh, Mr. Heim? So, the answer is um, because the contract is valued at over $10,000, and they may not have been in the past. 
um, also the amounts for 30B thresholds have changed over time. And we used an invitation for bid process. Uh, our options are to either take the lowest responsive bidder or to not take any of the bidders at all. So you not you don't have to accept anything. You don't have to uh, use this particular uh, response bidder, but of the folks that we got bids from, uh, we are obligated to take the lowest unless there's a disqualification um, that would preclude, that would evidence that they that they're not basically qualified to to take the work. So I'm not I'm not as I'm not familiar with the situation that um, that, that Mrs. Mahan is alluding to, but if there was a they weren't qualified uh, to take on the work, then um, you could go to the next one. But otherwise, um, your options are to either take this uh, lowest responsive bidder or to basically go back out and say we're not taking any of these bids. Um, we want to. Uh, cast our net out. Thank you. Okay, well, I, I, I certainly don't want to slow this down where um, I long have been saying, as others have, would like to do this as expeditiously as possible. I, I just want to notice for the record that um, I do have um, a concern that, uh, and it, it sounds like if, if we don't take paradigm, then we have to start all over and go from there. So certainly don't want to do that, but I just want to go on the record noting that um, I am caught aware of the fact that one of the five or six owners, principals of the company is a current town employee who is not Mr. Chapelain nor Mr. Attorney Heim. And um, I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Ms. Mahan. Um, Anyone else? Questions, concerns? You're not looking for any kind of a motion, Mr. Chair, are you? Well, it's um, it's a good question. It, um, it, I guess I don't need a motion. I did get a motion me, last week me, when I told you about the intention to move forward with um, posting for the interim, meaning that we were going to review um, the the bids and come back with you come back to you with um a selection and uh to me this is kind of going to it's a bigger step forward you know and so to the extent i got a motion on that one i mean i would like to on, on this one you know um i i will say this i mean i am perfectly happy to take mrs mahan's concerns um back to mrs malloy you know, um, and I would do that even with a motion. I mean, so what the motion would do is allow me to comfortably move forward, you know, um, should I bring the concerns to her and she uh, allay my concerns, you know. Um, well, okay, I'll make it easy. Yeah. I'm move approval of uh, the town moving forward with paradigm consultants. For the town manager's search process. All right. Thanks, Mr. Hurd. Um, I guess I'll go down the line here. So I've heard from Ms. Mahan. Mr. Kurs Mr. Corsi. Yeah, I'll, I'll second Mr. Hurd's motion. And, and and I wasn't aware of the second issue Mrs. Mahan raised, but I I, I imagine that person um is identified that person would would not be participating in this assignment and and uh um I, I i think you know that's something that perhaps you can work out with uh miss malloy and, and, and attorney hine but uh, and again not knowing what the what the facts are there but i mean if, if there is some sort of issue that there's a town employee who are is also a principal here i think that's something that uh um as I said, I'm happy to, to second Mr. Hurd's motion, but I just want to make sure that there's no issue uh, with that going forward. Yes. I mean, that's easy enough to do and something I would want to do anyways. I mean, so thank you, Mr. Corsi. Um, Mr. Helmuth, any comments, questions? Yeah, yeah just, um, just I'd be happy to support this. And I would also want to just communicate my expectation that it, you know, if we do indeed have a town employee who's, who's principal, my expectation was that they would more than likely recuse themselves from, from participating in the process um, subject to 
advice from, from Attorney Hyde and Ms. Malloy. Um, so that would be my request to investigate that. Um, and for me, that would be more than likely an acceptable remedy um, for any potential conflict of interest. Thank you. All right, thank you. And so um, no further comments from me. I'll, I'll, so I think we're all set with this discussion at this point. And, and with that and on a motion to uh, approve the selection of Paradigm and um, Associates and, um, for the search firm and, um, from Mr. Um, Hurd and a second from Mr. DeCourcy and um, Mr. Heim. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Helmer. Yes. Uh -huh. um, uh, I'll vote yes and I'll just, um, hearing my colleagues' remarks regarding um, the current town employee who is, I, I believe he's called our assistant town manager who is not Mr. Feeney nor Mr. Pooler, <clears throat> but is in charge of our records request. And um, I don't have any issue um, in terms of his work performance or anything like that. But um, I think if the chair could go back um, and, I, and I know my colleagues, you know, looking over the list and I pick out who this um, individual is and if we could, um, I just think in the interest of his or her, um, position with the town as well as um, being a principal with Paradigm. It would also be to uh, their benefit to um, also excuse from this process. So um, I don't mean to be so <laughs> subterfuge with it, but thank you. So I'm, I'll support this. Yeah. And um, yes, for me, and, and it's fine. I mean, it's totally fine. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I think what you're doing, Ms. Mahan, is appropriate and totally fine I mean, and, and is worthy of a further discussion. So as I said, I mean, it's not, this is not going to rocket us forward. It just gives us the ability to move forward in, in 10 days, you know, but, but this, will, this will merit a discussion with me, with Ms. Malloy um, tomorrow, you know. So um, thank you. Um, and uh, let me get back to the agenda here. Mr. Chair, did we conclude that vote? We need to vote. Oh, I'm sorry. I voted yes, I'm sorry. It's a unanimous vote. And thank you for noting uh, that, Mrs. Mahan, and I, I, I'll be sure to um, vet the issues appropriately. I appreciate it. And further, Mr. Chair, if I could, just, just if, if we could request a report back on that particular issue of the board, just in case there was a mix up about to the, the, the very current status of the situation, um, I think I think it would be good to have that public as well, just so we, just so we're all clear on what the outcome of that discussion is. Yes, yes. Yes, Mr. Her Mr. Elmas, we'll get to do that in our long meeting on, on the 26th. Okay, so, so, so we'll have time for it. You know? And uh, with that, we'll move to um, correspondence received. You know? And, and um, this will be really short on my part because I, um, I, I put this on because I had forgotten it had been included on the consent agenda. I got an email from uh, Mr. Petru asking about the left turn restriction on Appleton and Mass Ave. And I remembered that this letter had come through in, and I looked for it, but didn't see it because I was looking at the wrong place on the agenda. So uh, Mr. Chapterlane told me that, well, we discussed this, what, what's up? And I told them, and so maybe he might have a quick report for us on what's going on at that intersection. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I wasn't able to confirm what had been installed, but as we had discussed, this board already voted affirmatively as March. 20th meeting yeah. to approve what's requested in this memo. And I will work with the chief to make sure that what was approved then, if it has not already been implemented, is in fact implemented. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chaplain. So um, is that your hand up, Mr. Hurt? A motion to receive. Um, Second. Okay. Thank, thank you. And um, so on, um, any other questions, comments? I just, I mean, the town manager is handling it, but I did drive by that intersection the other day with the sun blaring and and was recalling that we had voted on that. So whatever haste we can put into figuring out the left term restriction, I think is is important. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. And um, so with a motion from Mr. Hurd and a second from Ms. Mahan on see the letter, and, um, Mr. Heim. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Corsi. Yes. Yes. Mahan. Yes. Mr. 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 Yes.
And um, so um, quick round of new business. <laughs> no, you got to get to town meeting. Can I make the motion to suspend and reconvene, reconvene at 8 p.m. at the regular town meeting? Thank you, Ms. Mahan. Second. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Uh, Mr. Heim. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Of course. Yes. Helmet. Yes. Mahan. Yeah. Biggins. Yes. Shannon's folks. See you there, folks. Yes. Right. Go open the town meeting, Mr. Chair. Bye. Okay, bye. Okay.